So, Gary Lineker, it's really, really lovely to see you. Really great to have you uh, speaking here for us and for the NSDF. What I'm interested in is what, what is it about the NSDF that makes you want to kind of represent them or, or, or speak uh, up for them? Well, I, I, you know I'm a lover of theatre. I do. Um, even yours sometimes. <laughs> and um, obviously I'm from Leicester, so, yeah. um, so there are obvious um, things that would draw me into it. And um, I think it's good to encourage people, young people, mm. um, to go to the theatre, because it's great. It's like live sport. <laughs> is it not, is it not, is, I mean, there's part of me that kind of wants to ask, is it not just kind of like for, for like posh people and rich people? Oh, of course it's not. <laughs> it's for people that would enjoy it. Right. Obviously, you have to pay, so, you know, sometimes, yeah. you know, so, and it can be a little bit expensive, but it's great that they're going to help youngsters on that. Yeah. Um, to get, encourage them to go, but I suppose youngsters, what do they do? They go to the movies normally. Um, and perhaps they don't realise how actually more exciting theatre can be because they've not experienced it. So right. until, until you, you know, encourage someone to go, until you take someone, yeah. then how can they know how, yeah. how good it is? And it's, it's something you've enjoyed. Yeah, it's, it's like the difference between watching TV football and yeah. watching live football. Right. It's different. Right. There's an atmosphere. Yeah. Isn't it? it's, it's different. And the unpredictability and vitality exactly. of that. One of the people, one of the groups of people that we're looking to reach, I guess, would be young theatre makers in their late teens, 17, 18, 19 years old, maybe starting education or whatever. And it, it led me to wonder, what were you doing when you were 17, 18, 19 years old? I was kicking a ball around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. But going back a little bit before that, yeah. I mean, recently on Earth, that I, was in, <laughs> that I was in the school play. Well, it wasn't the school, it was like, like three nights running. Yeah, I was doing a podcast, and um, and someone sent in and uh, sent this picture of me in a school play that I have zero memory of when yeah. I was um, thirteen years old, and it ran for three nights. And there was a picture on the front that it was you know, some play <laughs> on a Shakespeare play, and um, there I was I, in the cast, you and actually got a good act. review. I so I've <laughs> always been a lovey, even though I couldn't remember it. And we're making this film at Spotlight. I think secretly you're going to go and get your Spotlight audition at the end. I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> yeah, so. I'll be giving you a job. I know, I'm, I know you've mainly been angling for a job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. But if you, were, if you could go back to like 17-year-old yeah. Gary Lineker, because you you, you're not like a Michael Owen or a Wayne Rooney who were playing top league at that age. No, I was a late developer. I yeah. didn't reach puberty until I was 17, so... <laughs> I was tiny, <laughs> in, always, um, at that point. So I used to have to hide in the, in the back corner of the shower. So, um, yeah, I was um, not, yeah, I was a late developer. I didn't get in the England team until I was 24. I just wonder if there's things which you, you wish somebody had told you at that age that you could apply not just to football, to, like, the 17-year-old actors or the 17-year-old playwrights or I directors. Think, I think a lot of the same things apply. Which um, are what? Is, is follow your passion. And give yourself the best possible chance to succeed by working as hard yeah. as you possibly can, and that's yeah. the ethos that I've kind of followed anyway. And I think that applies not just to um, not just to football, not just to sport, but also to theatre, and in fact, any walk of life, really. Yeah. Um, at, because at the end, if you give you you know if you give it your absolute best shot, yeah. and give yourself the best possible chance to succeed, then you'll have no regrets. You might regret that it didn't quite happen for you, but you know you've You've tried your hardest and you've given it your best. The, um, when I think about young theatre makers at about that age, mm. especially people who don't feel as though they're coming from a culture where they're entitled yeah. to be a playwright or Yeah, be I a think director. there's probably a lot more than that, obviously. It's yeah. a bit different and a lot of, not necessarily nepotism, but things, you know, it's obviously easier in the theatre world probably if you've come from a certain background, which doesn't really apply to football well, and sport. One of the things which I, lo I love about NSDF is that we can change that. That's the, that's why it's so important, and it's 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 because it should be the opportunity should be there for everyone. Yeah, yeah, like it is in sport, which like is, is one sport. of the great things in sport, and like it is with the NSDF. Yeah, I, the first time I met you, I remember the first the first meal we had together, the first conversation I had with you, where we'd been to the theatre, we'd been to see Curious Incident, uh, and I kind of made the observation that there were some similarities between acting on stage and playing in a football match. I remember your, your response was about how uh, half the crowd at the theatre don't ordinarily call you a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm sure that happens occasionally, especially with your place. Especially so. with my place. Yeah. Half <laughs> my audience normally Especially at the do. end when you've had everyone killed <laughs> and, uh, and stuff. But um, I think, um, no, there are ob obvious similarities. I think... The difference is if you're performing on stage, obviously it's 
more planned than ever a football match yeah. can be. So it's going to, you know, you've, you've got your lines that you, you have to learn. Yeah. And we have our lines that we have to learn, but it's also people are trying to stop you delivering yeah, your lines where it's not necessarily the case in theatre. Um, also in theatre, I think the audience by and large are tr want to be all on your side. Right. Whereas in football, that's obviously sometimes half of them are on your side and half of them are not. Yeah. But you still, your performance will be judged by the, the, the people in the crowd. It's, it, I think it's, it's closer in its similarities, the theatre is closer in its similarities to football than, than um, probably musicians, for example, who right. also perform into large crowds. Right. Because when people go and watch a musician, they go because they're a fan of that musician. Right. And they're all on side, they all know the songs. Yeah. And they perform. Yeah. And even if they make the odd mistake, no one really notice or, or care. In football, that's certainly different. <laughs> they really do care they do if you notice make a mistake. So um, and also in theatre, it's more noticeable if, if you know, somebody suddenly freezes and doesn't remember the lines or they you know, mess up. And that liveness so, is amazing. Yeah, the liveness is great. That I think um, uh, one of the joys about theatre for me is, that is the possibility you can be in the presence of a great performance. Yeah, one which of the I things, have been. I know, I'm yeah. very envious of yeah. your... Yeah. Well, who did you see in Death of a Salesman? I, 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 Hoff, um, Philip, Philip, Seymour Hoffman. Philip Seymour Hoffman and uh, in America, not, not obviously it was only a couple of years later that he, he, he yeah. sadly left us, but uh, I've seen some, some great performances. From, I always think, the, the, uh, comparing Philip Seymour Hoffman yeah. on stage with maybe playing in a match against Diego Maradona. Yeah, that's <laughs> an, yeah. <laughs> I think they're probably both similarities and perhaps personality. In some ways, <laughs> I would, from reading what I now read about people in Hoffman, but, um, but yeah, geniuses. And it's, yeah. it's great to have that. And to be in that presence. Yeah. The other thing which strikes me uh, is, is both football uh, and theatre are absolutely built on collaboration and their team efforts. Yeah. Everybody's kind yeah. of dependent planning. on there's one planning, another. There's planning, there's tactics, there's... Yeah. Well, you probably don't call it tactics in your world. No, do you know what? In my playwriting, I, yeah. I, I have invented a playwriting workshop game called Tactics. <laughs> finally, you've got it. We've spent years together, so many lunches, so many days, and finally you're getting it. Finally, this. I've got that. Yeah, it's magic. all about looking at the different yeah. things that people do to get what they want. But I was thinking about who, we, if you look back over your playing career, who were the, the collaborators, the teammates? that you were most excited about playing with? Or oh, I, the ones knows. that probably could provide me with the <laughs> ammunition that I needed <laughs> to score. Um, I think we're all a bit selfish in that, that aspect. But, I, you know, playing with, playing with the greats is always a thrill. And I've yeah. played with, you know, I managed to play on the same team as Maradona for half a game once, which was extraordinary. Wow. Playing for the rest of the world against... Um, the English League, actually. Bizarrely, I was playing for the rest of the world because I was at Barcelona at the time. Yeah. And it was their centenary. And um, Diego played and Platini and people. It was incredible. Oh. Um, so, but also in my career, I'd probably pull out a few names. John Barnes, unbelievable. Wingers, yeah. usually. Yeah. Usually wingers. Yeah. Chris Waddle, yeah. fantastic. Every time I made a run, he knew exactly where I was going. And then, probably for selfish reasons, um, Peter Beardsley, because we had this remarkable relationship um, on the field, I think I scored something like a goal a game when I played with him in England. That's really remarkable. Um, because it was it was interesting. Because you know, if you ever watching football and football punditry in particular, mm. I always hear this phrase, which I sometimes feel like I want to pick up on. They always go, "See, they're not getting enough men in the box," and I just think, no, that's the problem. There's too many men in the box. As a striker, what you really want is space. You you basically scoring goals is about attacking space. Right. So um, so that's what you do. And if the more people are in the box, the less space. Therefore, there is. Very and good. Beardsley didn't like going in the box. He used to be around the box and thread things through, and he left more space. And that's, I think, why I scored more goals. But that's kind of a selfish perspective. No, I don't, but I don't know because I think real collaboration comes out of everybody being selfish together. I think about I just opened the show in Manchester. Well, you all want the same thing, don't you? You want success, you want it to exactly, be a triumph. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I think about the way actors are working together in the show in Manchester, and it's absolutely people helping each other out. And th in that sense, I think theatre and football, football do have similarities. And I wonder the, about the NSDF being this, uh, the, the, the actual festival yeah. in Leicester. Yeah. Great city for you to Great be a champion city. in. Yeah. The Leicester Curve Theatre, <laughs> beautiful yeah. theatre at the heart of that yeah. city. And clearly the year where Leicester are going to win the league again. I say as a Man United I mean, fan, there's going to be a last-minute run. At, at some point, people are going to get bored with Leicester winning the league. <laughs> it's going to happen. You're not, you're not so, going to promise to so do think, Leicester you know, in your pants again? Uh, um, no. <laughs> Although, no, I have already made a, a silly promise. Oh, God, what did you promise? I, I said I'd 
because it was I did the Shearer and Danny Murphy and Ian Wright, the, you know, yeah. the kind of few silly bold jokes. Oh, no, you're going to I said I'd shave my head if I still want to which with these ears would be a <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible. What, what, I, what I was going to say was the NSDF, you're, you're taking theatre makers yeah. from all over yeah. the country. Yeah. And it's like the equivalent of a call yeah. up for England. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I suppose it is in many ways, yeah. and um, if the LSDF can do that, and in Leicester, yeah, <laughs> the homeland, um, that's that's got to be a great thing. It's got to be a great thing. Thank you very much.